Have y'all heard of As I Lay Dying at all? <laughs> Phil Grosso, Ken Susi, Ryan Neff, and then obviously had Nick Pierce that played the drums. One thing that nobody talks about is the fact that when all these four left the band about a month ago, they all stated something like, you know, their conscience and their ethics are getting to a breaking point and they can't handle it anymore. I'll give you an example. If I go to Ken Susi's statement, which is him, nice guitar, not a good shot. <laughs> if you look at Ken's statement that he posted on Instagram, he said, I jumped into As I Lay Dying camp with full knowledge of Haydn dramatic history. That's being Tim Blimps is putting out a hit on his wife. Um, but had a drive to just play great music with great friends. Unfortunately, my personal morals have recently been tested to a breaking point. Right? Like I told you guys earlier. This is what I wanted to say. Right? This is the thing that no one seems to be talking about with As I Lay Dying. You have four band members in 2017 rejoining a guy knowing that the guy has put out a hit on his wife. Like, first of all, who the hell does that? Right? Who the hell puts out a hit on his own wife? Like, what kind of a person does that? Either a person that is mentally ill or someone with really bad intentions like it's one of the two right like there's no other way these four joined a guy in a band who <laughs> put out a hit on his wife so already we know that the bar for morals and ethics and conscience is really really low we know that already so when somebody goes in and says, hey, my personal morals have been tested to a breaking point, I'm like, my guy, the bar was already low when you joined the guy who you know has done such a horrible thing. That's the first point. And the second thing is the thing that I've heard some people talk about. That is the financial aspect where, you know, people argue that As I Lay Dying is a big metal band and any musician that joins that band financially you know they're gonna do really well so there is that incentive there that you know if they don't join that band otherwise those musicians won't get it i disagree with that to be honest with you and here's why i disagree with that and this is not specifically restricted to as i lay dying as a band but generally the metal slash rock industry as a whole comparing 2024 with the 90s or early 2000 right the bands are no longer selling cds everything is streamed for a very cheap price so on spotify you pay like what 10 15 bucks a month you have access to literally everything whereas back in the good old days you had to what buy each cd for like 20 bucks that is gone after COVID, people have less money to buy merch, to go out to live shows, you know, buy some drinks in the venue, supporting the bands one way or the other. Overall, there's like less money for everyone. And then the second thing to keep in mind is that a metal band or a rock band, like As I Lay Dying has five members in there, right? It's not like Cardi B or Quavo or 50 Cent, like hip hop artists where they got themselves and then a DJ and that's enough. Now it's nice to have a hype man with you. But other than that, like you'll do it. Like if you look at Futures concerts, so now you have less money and then you have a band members of five here. And then it's not just that, it's like other overheads, venue fees, agent fees, transport fees. They go on tours. They got to hire all these buses or planes and carry all that equipment for five people with them. Again, a hip hop artist doesn't need any of that, right? So there's all these extra costs that also naturally comes with being a band. So now there is really not that much money for everybody. Also consider this. Look at the band members from 2023. Out of the five here, only two of these guys been there since 2024. With Tim being the only person who's the founding member has been there since the beginning. The pay structure in this band is not going to be equal and equitable. It's not going to be that whatever little that is left for these five gets divided e equally for like, you know, within the five there. Like, it's not like if, if a thousand bucks come in, they'll get like two hundred dollars each. It doesn't work that way. And the reason for that is because, number one, Tim Lemsis, the head, the vocalist is the face of the band. So 
a lot of the times, many, many people in the audience, many fans, go and see the bands for the vocalist, go and see the bands for the head figure, right? So that's the person that brings the bums out. That's the person that gets the bums on the seats and streams and everything else. So that person gets more money naturally, number one, fair enough. You know, the more you bring in, the more you earn, like it. But then also, Tim is the only person who's been there from the beginning, like in the thick and thin of it. So if somebody like, for example, Nick Pierce goes like, hey, you're getting paid too much, Tim, and you know, I gotta get some of that. The, and the second argument for it is that, hey, why? Like I've been through the thick and thin of it for 25 years. You just joined like two years ago. Why, why should you get it? Do you know what I mean? And so for these two reasons, from all that little money that is left, that is supposed to be divided for to these five people, that share is not equal for the five of them. Tim gets more of it. I said all of this to tell you that the financial incentive wasn't that crazy either. Like if someone works in the corporate world and they haven't even reached a management position, like they're just normal staff, they probably get paid more than the new guys who joined the band in 2017. But again, just going back to my point, it wasn't like Ken and all the other people that joined this band in 2017 joined it because of a massive, you know, financial incentive per se. So yeah, the bar is really low. I like the fact that they got away when they needed to. Um, it's great. It's a great thing to have. Like if something's not working for you in your life, walk away from it. You know, don't stay there till it becomes more toxic and more toxic and more toxic. And then you get to a breaking point, right? So it's a good thing. If something personally, professionally, creatively having a strain on you and, and sort of like stays that way, at some point you have to break away. So I applaud that. That's great. You know, do that. However, joining the guy in a band who has done some horrible stuff and is out on parole for it, I, yeah, I don't know. I don't think the ethical bar for that is that high. And I think I think it's about a good time to call it a call it a good night. <laughs>